い、長野駅駅前です。
the app available inside this link. I have uh, the Java preservable app available on the second link. And of course, my GitHub, uh, you're going to find all the updates that I'm doing on those. Okay. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of the day. Because everything was calm. 
got it measured and everything seems to work fine. Whereas in IT world there are spectacular mistakes and we have to keep up. We have to protect ourselves from some su such mistakes. So, what was our motivation? First of all, we have to know when we use the data from our production system so that we cannot serve the rats, recommendations and other things. Well, we thought that losing data is somewhat similar to losing the money. Because, for example, if you charge some kind of companies for displaying their ads and they're dis displaying the ads for the people that don't want to see them, probably you're losing money, right? Because you do not do what you are supposed to do. And yeah, from the technical point of view, we came to the idea that this should be a monitoring system so that the team who is responsible for coding, covering data from components of the web page gets notified when those data is being lost, okay? You can think of it this way. You've got the search box, and it is very crucial what is being, uh, what, what do people search, right? What's the most common typos in searches so that you could fix them because Polish language is quite difficult and you could try to fix something automatically. You could think what the users want from that perspective. So if the search box is losing the data, we're losing the money, and we should notify the team that's being responsible for search box immediately that, hey, your search box is working. It's working really good, but you do not cover the data. So this is not exactly what we want, okay? Although the service might work, it might not cover all the data, especially in the microservices environment, where most companies now try to be there, but they do not know that the data flows in microservices are really, really hard. It's not that easy so that you have one DB under the hood and you could cover everything, especially when you do something like a history. So, those are the questions that we had to answer before starting the project. First of all, how to cover the data? Where should we cover the data from, and what should we look at? Then, should it really be a real-time data anomaly detection? Is it okay if we have one minute delay, or maybe five minutes delay are still okay, because it's a monitoring, right? We would like to call someone on the duty from the technical services that they are serving in order to fix it. So probably this should be near real time because you wouldn't like to call someone in the night after two minutes of disruption because it might be an error in measurement. But if the box is not performing, let's say, for ten minutes, it's okay. You could be automatic, could pick a phone and call him in order to fix it. So near real time should be okay. And what is the acceptable <sighs> delay, right? Because from the moment that you gather the data, there are late events. The events may occur. So may get lost somewhere in the network. They might get reconnected. So you should also think more or less about the delay. For how long could you wait for the data before you check if it's okay? And last but not least, the most important domain question in here, what actually is an anomaly? Right? Because there are a lot of papers, a lot of white papers, but none of them really tells you in your kind of domain what is an anomaly. So, some technical point of view. We decided to put the name of Druid. Who amongst you have heard about Druid? Okay, and today if we have enough time, I will perform some kind of a demo of a Druid, because I believe this kind of technology will change the way we think about discovering the data in the future. It's what is a Druid? Druid is an OLAP engine. Do you believe that you could uh, perform OLAP queries, like, you know, the data we're housing and all of this heavy stuff in real time? Who amongst you believe that you could get OLAP cubes built in real time? Okay, so I hope we managed to get to the demo today, so that I can show you that actually we can nowadays get a data that's working in real time. And this is what we needed, right? Because we want to aggregate data in, let's say, every 15 minutes, right? So that 15 minutes is still not enough in order to call someone on duty to fix their issues, right? It's acceptable. If you do it equally, probably there will be more false positives, and this is what we do not want, because we will be uh, calling up people in the night in order to fix their systems. So false positives are bad in here. We would rather, rather work with like the people in the night, and we, we work with the other people because it's people that have the machines. And what should be measured? That's also the very important question before you start developing such a vector or machine learning. You need to measure some values that would be evaluated. What is the answer that you want to get? How much is okay? How much is not okay? What are the problems? What are the differences that are still acceptable? Okay? And what you got? So the measurement we thought about that we were not data scientists, we were simple engineers. So we want to create simple things, not some fancy algorithms. I'll go to that in a minute. So we decided to go and just counts of what we are measuring. So what is the data in the system that we're talking about? If you could see this pseudo is your this is more or less what we want to perform. And